Never go, oh, I just pulled some crap from my closet. <laughs> we need to know about the artistry, the time involved, the effort, the tears, the broken marriages over the work. Okay, well, thank you very much. Step to the side here if you can. We'll, we'll, we'll put a pin on that. We're going to rate all of these people later. Just want you to get to know them intimately now. Hello, sir. What was your name again? Cole. Cole. Uh, uh, Ash does not have uh, pierced, uh, circular, uh, plugged ears. I, I got attacked from the uh, by dead eyes a while ago, so they looked ugly with nothing in them. They looked ugly with nothing in them, so I decided to make them look beautiful and put plugs in them. Excellent. Where are you from? I'm from Phoenix. Ash, you're Ash, come on, let's do it! Uh, yeah! Come on, give me some sugar, baby. That's all you have to say. You know, a 
got myself a hobbit out there somewhere. So, you got yourself a what? A hobbit. <laughs> I've had a hobbit before. <laughs> Very earthy, those hobbits. <laughs> Sir, tell me about your costume. Alright, well, uh, it took me quite a while to get put this together. Probably like, hey, quite, quite a while. Yeah, okay. Um, what's quite to you? Uh, like two months worth of work after finding all the parts. Which took a while, like maybe a couple months to do. Uh, where'd you get the chainsaw? I found this on eBay. Does it work? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> Does it make any noises? Some of them I've seen, they make noises. Uh, I guess it makes... Sorry, I gotta, gotta put my shotgun away! <laughs> I mean, I can pull this up. <laughs> it's, it's out of gas, trapped in time, surrounded by evil. Low on gas. Yeah. Alright, how many hours do you think? Two months. And how much money do you think you spent on this? Uh, too much. <laughs> Probably a couple hundred bucks on all this. You're right, that is too much. <laughs> now, sir, you have bothered to do the blood matching. It's called continuity in the business. Oh, you've got jack shit on your face. <laughs> but wiped off. I think that raccoon licked it off on the top of your head. But, but notice, there's the proper blood. It's actually a good quality blood. Where did you get the blood? Uh, Bert Easley's costume shop. Costume shop. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> They're gonna go, why are all these jerks coming to my place looking for fake blood? It's pretty good though, not bad. Okay, so sir, step over here. We'll get back to you in a moment. So, sir, how you doing? What's your name? John. Jonathan, so you came as Ash. Clean cut Ash. Isn't it? Clean cut Ash. Where, where in any of the movies? <laughs> and I mean, in any of the movies, did Ash ever look like this? If you, if I could, can I uh, put a line? For you? Yeah, if you give a shit, yeah. <laughs> we just hacked up a girl for me, a chainsaw. Doesn't that sound like? Sir, I'm just going to end your misery. Step off the stage right now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Big round of applause for the man who gave no effort whatsoever to his gospel. Thank you. That was zero money well spent. Wow. I got to tell you, the guy at Ball's coming up here. I'll give him credit. Hello. How are you, Stumpy? What's going on? Right hand, right, that's the correct hand. That's right, very good. Tell, tell me about you, what's your name again? Russell. Russell. And um, why Ash, first of all? Ash is awesome. Love Ash. <laughs> Badass. Shit. I guess that was a stupid question, wasn't it? <laughs> and tell me about your excellent work that you put on making this album. Well, the shotgun was made by the last person you had up here. The Oh, the guy who did nothing. Yeah, that was my twin brother. Well, why didn't he at least bring that? That would mean that he would have done something. Because at the beginning of the show, you did, or at the beginning of movies, you didn't have a shock. You found it later. Oh, you're getting all fancy on me now. <laughs> okay. All right, keep going with your bogus story. Wait, hold on. So Ash has a, uh, a messenger bag, does he? In the matter, is that, a, is that a parachute for when things go really bad and you just pull the ripcord? What's that all about? Well, I didn't have a belt or anything to put around, so... No, you sure didn't, did you? No? <laughs> oh, so you wanted at least to get that. Yeah, uh, so you figured no one would ever see this dangly sack thing in your butt. <laughs> you around you go, what's your butt? You got a colostomy bag back there? What's going on? Right. When people take a picture, it's only in the front. Wow, that makes so much sense. Because <laughs> everything's kind of fake, isn't it? Oh, yeah, even movies. What? Movies are fake? <laughs> All right, sir, and how much do you think you spend on this? Oh, 30 bucks. <laughs> That's a great way to win a, a judge's heart. <laughs> Step right over here, sir. Okay, strawberry what? Strawberry syrup for the blood. Strawberry syrup. Boy, you really went all out. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hello, sir, I'll shake your other hand. And what's your name? Jeff. Jeff, and uh, tell me why Ash has a beard. <laughs> because I have a beard normally. And, uh, I don't know, I didn't ask that. Why does Ash have a beard? Did he sleep too long? Yeah, something about the time travel knocked him out, and uh, 
swallowed one too many drops, and boom, there it is. So you sort of post-apocalyptic ash. Yes. Well, let's see. You got sort of a couple of cuts here, like half as many. Um, how's that? How's that one blood thing working for you on the cheek? Or did some chick just kind of lick your face over? It was a dead eye chick. So you did put something on it, looks like, on your face, but very little, you'll admit. Uh, how much time did you spend on that? Uh, chainsaw is probably a month or two. Oh, you built that? Yeah, out of a real chainsaw. What do you do in the real world? Uh, city planner. <laughs> Now's your chance, folks. Any road to nowhere, now let them have it. Any crappy overpass, <laughs> shitty merge, disappearing lane. Do you suck or are you good? What, what is it? You stop building that light rail right now. Were you planning that? Uh, no, I wasn't. It's a boy fight. He was not involved in that. Sir. I don't care about your damn. Why do you care about the light rail? It's coming out of your, your little pocket? It's going too far. It's going too far. People usually say it doesn't go far enough. It goes too far. It doesn't go to California. Who wants to go there? Sir, I'm embarrassed for your whole citizenry. <laughs> All right, sir, thank you. Stick over here. We'll continue our, this miserable quest. Um, sir, were you looking in the magnifying glass when you made that chainsaw? Yes, what's your name? Zuck. Why is your chainsaw the size of a blimp? Because I'm the size of a blimp. So you're a proportional kind of guy. Exactly. I see. And where are you from? Uh, St. Tim Valley. Is that good? Not really. <laughs> well, one person thought it was good, but he didn't want the, the light rail to go through. <laughs> so what does he know about the, 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 about the valley? <laughs> what do you do there? Oh, I'm an engineer. You're an engineer. <laughs> yeah, let me get the road go that way and then go out. No way, but I'm an engineer too. It's a mechanical engineer, and then we can light up the lights on the side of the road. Sort of like that, is it? It's a, yeah. You work for the county? Uh, no, I work for a small shop out of Phoenix. What do you, what do you, what do you engineer? Uh, sheet metal and other kind of uh, mine equipment. Did that help you build that? Uh, the bending, yes, actually. How much of that did you build? Uh, all of it. Alright, uh, that thought we'll have a chance to rate their expertise soon. How long did it take? Um, it took about three months for everything to get the parts, get the boots, get the clothes right, trying to match the actual, uh, I didn't have time to do all the blood, but I had, uh... Your shirt, there's... No pocket missing. I don't care about the pocket missing. You see that shirt, sir? Right. Is that that shirt? No, that's the shirt that forgot about everything else. Yeah. That's the shirt that when I got the saw right, that's the shirt. We'll get to you because you're too goddamn bloody in your face. <laughs> you understand? So there is room for constructive criticism. Right. We'll get to that. Stand over there, please. Thank you very much, sir. Come over here, sir. And uh, what's your name? Ian. Ian, you got boy, well, you got the blood going. You got the blood going. How'd you how'd you do the blood? Uh, carol syrup, red food coloring, chocolate syrup. Now why the chocolate syrup? A little bit darker. No, 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 no. It's a drop of blue. Yes. Too much blue makes it turn purple. You don't want that. Not enough makes it turn pink. But not bad. Are you all sticky and disgusted? My everything is glued to my everything else. <laughs> like my everything is glued to my everything else. Yeah. It makes sense. I have, a, I have some advice. When you were done with today, Turn the shower on, and walk into it with your clothes on. I was already contemplating that. That's how I did it during Evil Dead. We'd shoot all day, drive past people going to church while I'm sitting in the back of a pickup truck with blood all over me, waving like nothing's wrong, and then they would pray for me, and then uh, I'd step in the shower and get it off. So tell me, how long did it take? 
and say I put it together. That's not that funny. <laughs> They're waiting for Nathan Fillion. Yeah. He took ill, he had to go. He's really sorry. He had to get back to his castle. How much money did you spend? About 60 bucks. <laughs> Give us go. Uh, 30 bucks, 60 bucks, it doesn't matter. Step right over here and say thank you. And uh, last but not least, what's your name? Matthew. Matthew, and, and who are you today? I'm Work Ash. Work Ash. So uh, let's have a look at Work Ash. Yep. Yep. That, that blue smart sure is looking good, isn't it? That uh, shop smart, shop S smart. You got it right here. Yep. Yep. Boy, those pants, they have, nope, nope, they don't match at all. And uh, yeah, Ash kind of gave up on the spikes. Yeah, he tried them. Wasn't really for him. Uh, I think I need to shake your hand and escort you off the stage right now. Thank you very much. There's another fella who is, also has the same lack of effort. Thank you very much. You guys can be perfect. Hang out and do nothing together. All right, guys, line up. Right along here. It's time. And come on down this way. Let's give everybody room to get in there. It's time to rate these people because there's money at stake. I've got money on the line here. Money's going to go to the winner. Do you understand? Put my hand on. Let's go back to where this all started with the dead raccoon. He picked off the 10 freeway. I know how that happened. Okay. What do we think of this Ashetta? Try and save it now, lady. I call that polite. Okay, now this gentleman with the correct makeup, he's got the decent props, he's got the hoops, he's got the hoops. Okay. That was a little more enthusiastic. Oh, he's got the moves, too. Okay, okay now what about Poopy Pete here? Turn around, show them your excellent work. There you go. That's it. What are we waiting here? Yeah, my, I must be losing my hearing. All right. And how about uh, Ash, who, who didn't shave? What do we got going for him? What do you think? A little bit of work? A little bit of work? We'll see if it's enough. Yes, and the gentleman with the giant chainsaw here. What are we thinking about now? Right. It was some time invested into a giant chainsaw. Yes, and last but not least, the man who got the shirt and the blood pretty much right. Correct me if I'm wrong, we live in a democracy. Did this man win? Or did this man win? All right. Sir, you won. And for all of your efforts coming to Phoenix and all your time and money putting it into it, paying the million dollars it took to get in here, waste your money on this stupid panel. Here's five dollars in compensation. Coming in second, coming in second to uh, pay for the, the electricity for the hot water for the shower, there's two dollars. Well done. Well done, most of you. What else do you see? A table. A cheesy covering. Empty chairs. No, 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 no. Well, what, two, we have three chairs. But what, when I look at this setup, what's... What, they're empty. What's missing from those chairs? Me! Who put their... Oh, Mr. Public Transit Man. Do you feel that you're qualified to be on a panel in front of hundreds of blood-sucking fans? <laughs> yes? What do you stand up, please, sir? What do you do? Myself right now, uh, I work for... Uh, 
PayPal. Now does PayPal, are they, is PayPal cool with the light rail that's going to go in? Okay. Well, sir, would you like to try a brief stint up here on the panel? Yes, sir. All right, come on up here, right there. Please, work your way up. If we could hold the curtains back for him, maybe help them not trip and kill themselves and sue this convention, that would be great. Come on right up. Now this gentleman was obviously very opinionated. He thinks himself very clever. Anyone out here like... I notice there's a nuclear plant not far away. Do we have any nuclear scientists here today? What? Hands are still up in the air? Yes, right there. What are you? Yes, you. Now I can hear you. Come on up here, jackass. How are you? What's your name? Miguel. Miguel, please sit down. Sorry, we don't have any water for you. That would be too extravagant. Yes. <laughs> uh, so he's working his way down here. Okay. So what do you do in the real world? Uh, I work uh, at call center, actually. The, pay, the PayPal? Yep. PayPal call center. And then that's going to be yours. So you can cozy up and have that microphone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, don't, don't get carried away. Yes. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? What's your name? Marty. Marty? Have a seat, Marty. Marty, our favorite nuclear scientist. Do you work at the plant that's nearby? Don't worry about it. We have people for that. There you go. Just speak right in there. You, so it's Marty. Yeah. You work at that actual plant? Yes. Don't do that with the wide eyes. <laughs> that makes me really nervous. I work, at the one, I work at the one that allowed me to get up here on stage. The one that allowed you to get up here on stage? Which is fiction. <laughs> Scientist, you're a weirdo. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Sir, how does one become a nuclear scientist? Mostly lying. <laughs> this man is guarding and protecting something that's incredibly close that can kill you very quickly and multiple times over. So appreciate your flip attitude on that. That's that's great. All right. We're missing one panelist. <laughs> Why are you so adamant, sir? Are yeah, you just depraved? And you just you, you're up, you're down, you're all around. I, I don't know. Do you have any special skills, sir? Do you have any skills? I'm not asking about my skills, I'm asking about your skills. You like making videos. I, like I said, do you have any skills? No. Appreciate your enthusiasm, sir, that's not enough to get on this panel. We have a call center guy and a nuclear scientist. You cook for your wife. Stand up, sir, stand up. What do, you, uh, what do you cook for your wife? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Why is she just freaking lazy? <laughs> She's a doctor, pays the bills, you do jack shit. Oh, honey, I cooked you a little something. Meanwhile, six hours in between. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, let's hear what you have to say. Come on up. Please help this man up safely, safely and calmly. Wow. On some panels, you just never know what you're going to get. Because as soon as he gets up here, we're going to open the panel up to you to ask questions of a nuclear freakazoid. Oh, hello, sir. So, greetings. How are you? What's your name? Andy. Andy, sit down there. You're the happiest man in uh, Arizona right now. <laughs> yeah, he's happy. It's only 106 today. <laughs> uh, so, Andy, you cook. What, how did you gain this skill? That's your microphone. You might want to bring it a little closer to you. Practice. Practice. What's your specialty? Barbecue. Uh, where's your wife? Man, would you stand up, please? Very lovely outfit. I see that. And what are you today? Are you one of the Doctor Who's? Which number? Eleven. Oh, I should have known that. <laughs> what are you, man? 
You're the target. The TARDIS. The what? The TARDIS. It's the phone booth. The TARDIS. Oh, the figure on the inside. That's fucking Greek to me, sir. Do you realize that? I don't know anything that you're saying. I'm like, who do they have in the hammer there? Clap to you, Ron. That's fat So, you're the, what was she? The TARDIS. You're the TARDIS. What do you like about the TARDIS? You don't know? You went through all this trouble, you don't even know? She's do you know your mind? You're a doctor, you put, people put their lives in your hands. Can you save me, doctor? I don't know. What kind of a doctor are you? A psychologist. She diagnoses children with learning disabilities. Children with learning disabilities. Good news is you got a lot of clients right here in this room. I'm one of them. I'll do the talking mostly. What is his specialty? He claims his barbecue. Do you eat his barbecue? Oh my god, sir! I think we found a, a, a glitch. A loophole. Oh, I cheese all my meals. Yeah, it sounds like jack shit cheese. You only eat chicken and fish, but he only cooks barbecue. Everybody else says that. Why don't you eat barbecue? You're an Arizona man, that's illegal that you don't eat meat in Arizona. Do you have a gun on you currently? Because if you don't, you're going to be arrested. I hope you're packing underneath there. With some little thigh buster? What do you say? I don't mean to pick on you, ma'am. I'm just trying to corroborate his lies. Thank you, ma'am. Sit down. Any questions for this a nuclear scientist? How many chances do you get to ask a nuclear scientist questions? Probably none. Sir, apparently they don't give a shit. They just don't care about their future. Anybody have... What's that? What's the name of the plan? The Springfield Power Plant. <laughs> Meaning he should have learned that? that? Probably. Isn't that where Homer works? Alright. Alright, alright. Uh, apparently, his, as a panelist, he might be failing. I'm a little concerned for him. This, a nuclear scientist. I'll ask some questions then. What makes you so cool? I think you're making an assumption. I'm not cool at all. <laughs> but when people think of nuclear scientists, they think, wow, they're special, they're gifted. Like, are you really smart? No. I think my wife thinks that I am. Your wife thinks she is. Yeah, you better be married, you idiot. <laughs> Alright, where were we? A bunch of qualifications. How many years of school did you have to have? Um, I went to four. Four years of school. Four years of school. How do you become a nuclear scientist in four years? It should take four decades. Well, you know how you can go online and get a certificate? You go online and get a certificate. Yeah. And that's what you did? Yeah. <laughs> I want to commit violence on you right now. So there are too many cameras. There's too many cameras. I just want to hit you with my microphone until you tell the truth. Alright, that's fine. Sir. Yes. What was the last meal that you cooked? Uh, I smoked a tri tip and I. You got a barbecue or smoke everything you can't just throw something in a pan and flip it over, call it a day? Oh, well, before Comic Con, I made General Sos tofu on top of udon noodles and sauteed vegetables. <laughs> Now, sir, you've been awfully quiet down here. Well, it's just respecting you, sir. I appreciate that. Well, that time is over. <laughs> I would like you to tell us a story about yourself, something that nobody here in this room knows. <laughs> uh, it could be a little dark. 
a little dark. No, it doesn't have to be. Okay. It can be light or dark. It's your story. All right. Um, very simply, um, you know what the SATs are, right? The SATs are, yes. Yes. So They had those even back when I was in school. <laughs> they were called the TASs back then. I don't know what they meant. I didn't know what it meant back then. Okay. Well, um, after uh, we took the SATs, uh, we're here waiting for uh, my girlfriend's mom to pick me up. So when she goes to pick me up, um, my girlfriend gives me a lollipop, and I put the lollipop in my mouth, and I didn't know there was a bee on it. So my stung, I got stung on the tongue by a bee, which is hard to say even now. And I ended up going to the emergency room, where in order for them to release me, I had to sing a song to them so I can go to a competition for singing for the state, and I was able to do so and was in the state choir for Virginia. Wow, that's something I didn't know before. And you still maintain your voice? Uh, sometimes, we're actually... Take um, your microphone, please, and come up here. <laughs> and please sing any song you like, these people. Give it your best shot. Make it kind of short. Okay, can I, can I ask them for help? Oh, it's, your, it's your song. Okay. I'm going to ask you for help. Please follow along if you know it. <laughs> Give them a chance, for God's sake. I'm so nervous right now. I got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I got the month of May. Well, I guess you say what can make me feel this way, my girl. Talking about. Confessions of a Bee Movie Actor. Do you have it here with you? Yeah. Everybody have it here with you? Yeah. You got it? Pass that forward, please. <laughs> you'll get it back. About 50 50 chance you'll get it back. <laughs> Bring that over here to this young man. Now, sir, remember where this book came from? I'd like you to speed, put your hands up where the book came from. Speed read it in 30 seconds to give it back to them, please. That's everything you need to know. Thank you very much. Yes, give it back to them. Thank you. Yes, right here. Spike O'Malley. Hi, Spike O'Malley. You're looking pretty sharp today. You're a stand-up comedian. Been in a couple slasher movies. I have so much respect for you now. People don't realize that when you get killed at night, with all the sticky blood, all the bugs stick to you. Yes, because it's even worse during the day, sir. Yes. Uh, yes, kid, right here. And of you. Okay. It's like burn notice, mate. It's burn notice. My question was... What I like how he's, like, he's talking like this. What's been your favorite um, movie or TV show to act? My favorite movie or TV show to act in. What's your favorite? Because I don't pay for them. Um, uh, I'd say Burn Notice. Burn Notice. Have you seen um, the original Evil Dead? Uh, no. No? I have seen the newer one. The newer one? 
because that was less violent and bloody than the original? Oh, you just happened to be walking through the back, you were making a ham sandwich, you went, oh, what are you watching? No, no, I spent the night there. You spent the night there? What else did you watch other than that horrifying movie that you should not have been watching? Um, you didn't really watch that much except that. You can't really watch that much except no. what? No, we didn't really watch that much. Oh, you didn't watch that much? Did you play games? Did you cosplay? You know what that is, don't you? That's what someone who's <laughs> really bored, they, uh, they dress up because they're tormented about their actual life. <laughs> or something like that. What do you want to be when you, how old are you? Eleven. Eleven. What are you doing here? You should be chasing girls, throwing rocks at them at some dirt yard somewhere, <laughs> shoving her into cactuses because you like her. <laughs> Do you like girls? No. Well, you better figure something out. <laughs> girls or guys, you gotta like something. Well, we are in Arizona. You got other stuff here, too. A lot of cattle. Don't pay any attention to anything I say. <laughs> so you're 11. What grade are you? Um, I'm in between 5th and 6th. In between 5th and 6th. Did you just get out of school? Um, about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And what are you, where are you working this summer? <laughs> you know, we're, we have economic woes in this country. Did you hear that? Like, what are you going to do to support this country? To make it a better place? Are you going to keep soaking off your parents? <laughs> How much do you pay to sleep every night? Like five, six bucks a night? Are you, you look at me like you don't know. How much do you pay for your meals? When I turned 18, my parents gave me a bill that made my jaw drop. I went, ha ha, you're funny. Ma, you're funny. I was laughing out on the street corner. Be when you grow up? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> you want to survive, don't you, in this world? Yeah. Like have food that was not given to you free by your parents. Like food that you purchased and you ate. How do you plan on buying that stuff? I want to see my uncle in Des Moines. How are you going to get there? Oh, well, Facebook? Or, uh, no, that's not good enough. What would you like to do? Maybe be a physicist. Hmm. How would you maybe do that? Doesn't sound like something you would maybe do. Go to college. Go to college. Which college? <laughs> Don't listen to these people. None of them have gone to college here. <laughs> okay, sir. College is pretty cheap these days, right? <laughs> How are you going to pay for college? <laughs> you know, when I walk up, up on stage here, I have to go through the back where they're doing a lot of dishes back there for the whole convention center. Are, are your parents here? Dad's like somewhere. He's at the bar. <laughs> well, dad's a musician, right? Every day at 4 o'clock, he turns into a bar. <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. Okay. Suntech, is that, it's those umbrellas that keep you from... No. Oh, no? No, it's uh, solar panels. Solar panels? Why, is, there, is it sunny here in uh, Arizona? Yeah. Yeah? Probably a good place for it then, huh? Um, he's a substitute teacher. He used to be a teacher for math. And now, so he used, used to be a teacher. Sense. What does he teach now? Well, right now he's... How to train he people to be a teacher? No, he's working at Super Shuttle. He's working at Super Shuttle. Well, that's how I got here from the airport. I think I met you, Dad. I was only 45 minutes late getting here, too. I'm not going to pick on you anymore, kid. What's your name? David. All right. Come up here. For all the time that I tormented you. Thank you very much.
that kid had it coming, let me tell you. Jeez. <laughs> Gotta take a nap after that. Why are you bouncing up and down? Why, why should I pick you? I don't need to pick you. There's dozens of other qualified people here not near a microphone. You're not just going to get picked because you're near a microphone. You're going to get picked with the best question. Yes. Are you right here? Yeah. Awesome. First, love you. You're amazing. Secondly, um, as an actor, and as an amazing actor who... Stop buttering it up. Just get to the question. Great for sport credit for what he does. Has there ever been a role you really, really wanted, they teased you with it, and at the last minute pulled away from you, and if so, what role Is there ever a role I really wanted? And they teased me with it, and they took it away from me. What kind of a cruel business do you think this is? Sit down. This is a sweet business. There's no jerks in this business. <laughs> yeah, you just settle down. Yes, sir, right there. Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. Is it going to be a movie? We've had this conversation before. It went something like this. New Line calls us up. Hello. Hi. New Line Cinema. We'd like to make Ash versus Jason versus Freddy. Great. That way Ash can kill them both. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that was the conversation. There'd be no reason to do that movie unless Ash killed both of those jerks once and for all. Yeah, yeah. Just that. No reason. No reason to do that. Yes, right there, waving. I really want to know like working on Xena. Was it like working on Xena? Yeah, Xena. Yeah. What did it seem like? Like, what did you like about it? Then I was what? Slick? Yeah. Was I slick? <laughs> yeah, I got to remember that. It's like working on Xena. It's pretty cool because I was slick. <laughs> uh, Lu Lucy was fabulous. Renee, uh, when there's an episode of Lucy Lawless is, goes into my body, and here and invades my body, and now I have the essence of Xena in me, and I have to kiss Gabrielle. Put my hand on her ass. <laughs> and because I'm a method actor, <laughs> we had to do it until we got it right. <laughs> over and over and over. And then I bounced a quarter off Renee's ass. Pop! <laughs> Let me tell you, man, she worked out. <laughs> Renee was the best fighter of any of them. She could go ha, pop, 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 pop. She could practice. The rest of us are like, hey, what do we do? Uh, hey, how? Uh, and then we do something. <laughs> she worked very hard. They were good. All the Xena people were very nice. The Hercules people were very nice. And both Hercules and Xena were injured as actors at the same time. So I got really busy during that time period. Went from one show to the other. While uh, Lucy Lawless got a horse that rolled over on her. Broke her pelvis. Think about that. Think about that. Nothing's moving there. Nothing. <laughs> Kevin Sorbo had a life-threatening aneurysm. So, that's Hercules you're talking about. So it got a little weird there, but we uh, soldiered through. They're both in full health today, thankfully. Kevin I run into all the time on the circuit. Yes. Yeah, right here. Oh, no, no, no. You got sick. Yes, sir, right here. Evil Dead 4. Evil Dead ever. Evil Dead 4 happening ever. Yes. Sure, why not? Yeah, sure. Are you ever going to return to the character? Sir, Evil Dead, the first Evil Dead, cost $350,000. Yes. It made $20 million. Woo! Yeah. Evil Dead 2 cost $3.5 million. Made about $15 million. Army of Darkness cost $11 million. It made $11 million. I'm not counting 
the merchandising, come on. Not counting the merchandising. Oh, so now you're a know-it-all. <laughs> so the studio is really ripping us off then. They actually owe us millions and millions of merchandising. Billions and billions. Okay, well, sir, I think I'm not a mathematician. There is a, an atomic scientist here that would be maybe qualify that. But I think the, the economics might not be where they need to be. Sam Raimi's making the biggest movies in Hollywood. What are we going to make, a $300 million army of darkness? <laughs> so that all five of you can show up three times? Three Darkness versus the Avengers, do it! Versus the Avengers, nice. Thank you for that ridiculous question. Uh, yes, wait a minute, sir. In the uh, preface to the Deadlands game... The Deadlands game... You offered to uh, roleplay the people I offered to role play with people. Did anybody ever take you up on it? Did anyone ever take me up on it? Once. <laughs> she was very hot. We had a private session. <laughs> Let's just say that story had a happy ending. <laughs> How did that translate? What was? Could I see that in sign language? <laughs> I gotta remember the happy ending. <laughs> over here, uh, yeah, okay, all right, the price is right, you win. Yes, yes, what can I do for you? Well, I just want to know, first of all, I love you. Second of all, will we ever see Briscoe come back? Will we ever see Briscoe come back? That's one of my favorite characters all time. Yeah, because you know, shows that are now 20 years old do really well <laughs> later. 20 years ago, man. 20 years ago. <laughs> All right, all right, let's bring it back. We'll do it, we'll do it. The old saying is old TV shows age like fish. <laughs> Just saying that's all. Never say never though. Yes, in the, in the yellowish outfit. What is that, what are you wearing? Your what? Jake the dog. Let him talk, let him talk. Adventure Time, Jake the Dog. What would you like to know, sir? My, my favorite Evil Dead? Of the movies. Probably Evil Dead 2. <laughs> Only because there was a lot of behind the scenes stuff that went on with Army of Darkness and Evil Dead 1 was a very crazy, weird shoot. Evil Dead 2 was fun because we had a lot of creativity, a little more money, and nobody really messed with us. So we kind of just went away to North Carolina and did it. Do not try and see the cabin, by the way. There's a cabin in Morristown, Tennessee. The original cabin. Get off of their property. <laughs> for people who are gun lovers, don't, just don't do it. They will shoot you first. I've been at these conventions. The guy puts a rock in front of me. He goes, <laughs> I'm like, what are you laughing at? He goes, <laughs> I'm like, did you go on that property? <laughs> he's lucky he's alive. Stay off of that property. Please, please. Yes, Ash with the cape. Where were you earlier? You got a cape on. You could have scored some points. Nobody else wore a cape. I don't give a rat's ass about bad Ash. Oh, was that a little kid? Oh no, that's an idiot. No, that's a full run idiot. Why, why are you on your knees, bad Ash? Oh. It's easy for you to say. Do you have a question, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Supposedly, in Evil Dead, the end of Evil Dead. No, Evil Dead. I was there. Do not dispute me. Supposedly, to get the last shot, Sam Raimi, the only way we could figure out how to do it was racing through the back door of the cabin and smashing open all the doors and then running up to me and getting a big close-up. How were we able to do that? Is what you're asking. The rumor was, the rumor was Sam Raimi was on, he had to ride a motorcycle, mount the camera to the motorcycle, in order for it to work, he had to hit me. Why are you laughing? It hurt like hell. So yes, that's true. Sam damaged both of his knees 
ruined the motorcycle. I got three crack ribs and a broken tooth. That's the shot that's in the movie. So there you go. Yes, it's real. Yes, right in the middle of it. Yes. Yes. What are you dressed as today? Harley Quinn. What is Harley Quinn? What is Harley Quinn? What does she do? Joker's a sidekick, thank you for summing it up. But why did you pick that character? Out of all the DC characters, she's your favorite. Do you identify with her? How would you describe her character? Crazy, psychotic. Is that, would that be you in real life? Because <laughs> you kind of got me a little crazy to come here, don't you? Just a little. You know, just a little. Alright. Your favorite movie is My Name is Bruce. Wow, you're the one who saw that movie. That was awesome. wow, that had to be someone, somewhere. Yes? My favorite part of it? Yeah, uh, I just enjoyed getting the pitch from the producers of the movie. Mike Richardson from Dark Horse Comics. He says, come on up, let's have a meeting with Mark Verheiden, the great writer. He goes, hey, we want to pitch a project to you. I'm like, okay, what do you got? You're playing yourself, and you're a jerk and an asshole and a loser. <laughs> But there's these fans who think that you can actually fight monsters who are having problems with a monster of their own, the Chinese god of war. And they kidnap you to help the town, but because you're a jerk, an asshole, and a loser, you don't really help at all. Lots of people die, and it's you kind of fuck everything up. I was like, where do I sign? Yeah, but there's a difficulty. I want you to understand this. When you make, my name is Sally Sue, when you're a little older. It's a, it's a very dangerous thing calling yourself your actual name in a movie. Because somebody in Des Moines thinks that, A, I drink whiskey out of a dog bowl, <laughs> and that's what I feed my dog, is whiskey in the dog bowl. And he gets ornery if I don't give him enough whiskey. And then I hide whiskey bottles all over the house. It's not true. I only drink tequila. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you liked that movie. <laughs> that was, it will uh, give people the false impression about me for the rest of my life. Yes, sir, so you can calm down. You know what job you need? You need the guy with the subdivision signs, right? <laughs> and they tell the guy, you better keep moving or I'm not gonna pay you. <laughs> so I'm on the corner watching, do what you were doing. <laughs> Stop moving the sign, I can't see what you're selling. <laughs> He's like, okay, yeah, good. Yes, sir, what's your question? Okay, my question Come on up to the microphone. Let's hear those dulcet tones. Close up. <laughs> Get right in there. Okay, my question for you is, uh, your experiences from, which I started seeing you at a very young age in Briscoe County Junior. Yes, then seeing yes, you at Zena yes. and Hercules. Yes. Uh, Mask of all trades. Are you going to list them all? Yes. All right, good. I'm going to take it down. And let me know when I'm done. <laughs> and I didn't really see Burn on us, but I did like you in it. <laughs> wow, that's just a that's just a mistake, sir. I'm just going to throw that out. I didn't see seven years of your work, <laughs> sweating your noodle off in Miami for seven years, 111 episodes. I didn't see any of that shit, but I liked it. How could you like it if you didn't see it? commit violence on you right now. And, and, and anyways, what is your experience with all those shows? What do you care? You didn't see that. <laughs> no, I actually saw three out of four. Well, my favorite was Burn Notice. <laughs> jumped around for an hour to get abused like that. <laughs> right here, sir, yes. What was it like making Crime Wave? The movie that here, nobody here knows even what you're talking about. <laughs> it's out on Blu-ray. 
All right, so everyone knows what a disaster it was. <laughs> it was a, uh, a psychological shock to the system because we had a lot of freedom making the first Evil Dead. We raised money from doctors and lawyers and dentists in Detroit. And we just got to go do our thing. And there's no director's cut for that movie. It's the only cut that was made. No studio interference. Then we did Crime Wave, where we got money from a studio. And everything changed. <laughs> so we got a very good experience, an early experience, of what it's like to deal with a studio, which is, can be very restricted, because it's the golden rule. The guy who has the gold makes the rules. <laughs> you know how you get a bank loan? You convince the bank that you don't need the loan. No, we'll give you the loan. You're like, you bastards, what if I needed the loan? <laughs> oh, you can't get the loan because you need the loan. <laughs> I wouldn't be here if I didn't need the loan. Do you need the loan or do you not need the loan? No, I don't need the loan. Now you can have the loan. <laughs> you can't get out of a guilty plea unless you plead guilty. I'm innocent. You're going to be in trouble if you plead, I'm innocent. What if I'm innocent? You better plead guilty and then you can be innocent. In Arizona, they just shoot you, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> now look, these people don't get any special treatment just because they're a little bouncier than people in the back. Anyone has a legitimate question in the back, you're more way in the back. Let's do it. Am I good with a gun in real life? A guy came up to me the other day and he goes, Bruce, did you have to practice a lot for burn notice? Go to the range all the time. I said, sir, I hate to break this to you, but I never actually had to hit anything. <laughs> the, the guy kind of went, oh, oh. <laughs> I shoot it at fabric flags with an X on it. <laughs> hey, did I get him? Did I get the guy? Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's all fake, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's fake. Yes, with the hat. Oh, you saw burn notice. Oh, he saw burn notice. What's the next challenge you want? What's the next challenge I want? To get off this stage, for God's sake. No. Uh, NBC is doing a new show called Mission Control. It's like Mad Men with jokes. It's like a watchable Mad Men. So we'll see what happens to that Will Ferrell is producing. It might actually be funny. Because it was time to do some humor. After passing briefcases full of money around for seven years, but you never saw that, did you? All right, sure, this, this person over here, yes, that you're pointing to. With the long hair. With the wig. You didn't even bother to stand up. Let's go back to her. Go ahead. Why did I get involved in the original Spider-Man trilogy? Not a waste of about a dozen years of my life. No. Why would you not? If you're an actor, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I named Spider-Man. Do you realize that? If I hadn't been in the original Spider-Man movie, this billion dollar series would be called The Human Spider. In the second Spider-Man, Spider-Man comes in to get into the theater to see Mary Jane in a play for the first time, but he's late. I'm the usher. I don't let him in, do I? Technically, I'm the only character who's ever defeated Spider-Man. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. In the third one, as the French painter D, Spider-Man comes to me for help. How many people get a superhero coming to you for help. Do I help him? No, because he was kind of a dick to me in the first two movies. <laughs> so there you go. That's why, and it's just watching Tobey Maguire is very funny, because the first movie, he goes, oh yeah, hi, you're a friend of Sam's. Uh huh, yeah, hi. And then we shoot a little scene, and then the second movie comes up, he comes back, and he goes, what? why are you back? <laughs> are you playing the same character? No, a different guy. Why are you back? He couldn't, he, he, and then by the time the third one came around, he saw me, he goes, oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. He just gave up at that point. 
I knew he was doomed. I knew he was doomed to be blown off the screen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our time here has come. Aww. How do we say this has been a happy, happy ending? <laughs> this has been a very happy ending. I want to thank you all for coming today. You're very beautiful people. Thank you.